Hello there everybody and welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be working on our fetid bloat drone and uh, oh man I love this model. There's like so much detail in there uh, and it's it's awesome. Now this is the one out of the Dark Imperium set uh, and obviously there's other variants of this but we're just going to cover the main kind of basics of the scheme but I'm really looking forward to having this guy all painted up uh, you know come with that we're going to do lots of the special effects on there we're going to be doing some rusting we're going to be doing some Nurgle's rot to make them all oozy and gross uh, going to be fantastic so uh, I want to get going on right away let's uh, paint them all up in the Corax white so I'll have them primed in Corax white I should say and um, it'll provide a nice kind of bright foundation for all of our colors because our scheme is is pretty darn bright so uh, I'll get them all primed up and we're off okay so we've got our bloat drone all primed up in Corax white and uh, oh man loads and loads of detail on this guy it's all gonna come out super nice as we uh, paint them along now uh, like our other uh, kind of Death Guard models um, you know the, the the Plague Marines and of course the Pox Walkers uh, we want to make sure that we have this kind of cool thing where we don't know where the uh, the flesh uh, begins and ends and where the armor begins and ends as they kind of meld into each other as they're rotting and all of that. So what I'm going to do to start off is I'm going to take, uh, we're going to base off all of our armor and it's going to be in Nurgling Green and uh, basically any of the armor and any of the flesh uh, we're going to do up in the, the Nurgling Green. Now this thing is going to come across super bright uh, once we're all ready to go. But uh, any of the flesh and any of the armor uh, will do and we'll just base it in Nurgling Green. So all this cool undersided uh, goopy gooey stuff in here uh, we'll get to as well. Now um, the weapons themselves, the casings for that, I am not going to do in the Nurgling Green. Uh, they're going to be go end up being uh, black. Uh, when we're done so uh, yeah so I'll just go and do my two thin coats on here uh, making sure that I get you know nice good coverage over everything else but having that white base is going to be fantastic for um, you know just keeping the colors nice and bright okay so we can see that our friend here is all painted up nice and green uh, that nurgling green is really nice and bright uh, but that's going to be awesome uh, let's uh, move on next to our Balthazar gold and we're going to be going after any of the uh, fetishes, any of the iconography for Nurgle, all that in the, the Balthazar gold. Now, the reason that we're doing that uh, this way is that uh, the, again, if you follow any of the novels, anything like that, like they're really not into ornamentation at all. So uh, the only person who's really going to get that attention is going to be uh, Papa Nurgle himself. So uh, we'll start off with this big fly uh, kind of icon at the top. And um, it's it's a nice, good-sized icon here, so we can actually, uh, you know, paint it, uh, you know, instead of just going for the, um, uh, just just kind of going for the uh, metallics first, and then coming back and going over top again with the Nurgling green. Um, so it's got a decent enough size to it. Uh, so we'll do that, and we'll do the bands. All right, and we'll do the bands here as well. And if you do slop over again, you can always go back with a little bit of Nurgling Green and go from there. There's going to be two other elements on the body that we'll be going after. Uh, one is this kind of uh, coppery radiator type piece here off the nose. Okay, and we'll also go after the sensors here. Make sure we don't get too thick on those there. Uh, next up, we'll go after the iconography. Uh, you'll see it here on the side. And we'll do the metallics for this one first. A nice kind of coppery gold color there. And then we'll come back in with the black later. And we'll also do the icon at the back here. And we'll do these kettles at the back here where they're cooking up all the toxins and poisons of Nurgle. 
And then lastly, we'll do the same thing with this guy up here, leaving that center line, just so we can keep some kind of banding around this coppery, toxiny kettle here. So I'll put on two thin coats of this. Uh, make sure I got like some nice good coverage, but make sure that your paints are you know thinned out just with a little bit of water. And then we'll get a nice consistent color on there. Okay, so now that we've got the gold done, that kind of burnished gold, um, we're going to be using lead belcher now. And uh, there's a significant amount of uh, just kind of straight up metal on this guy. Uh, and it's going to take us a while to base coat it. So, you know, grab a cup of coffee, uh, grab your lead belcher, make sure your paints are, you know, a little bit of, you know, nice, some nice clean water tea at your side, whatever you need, and off we go. So uh, let's start off with the inside, the eye. Um, so I'm just going to go around the eye. Uh, might be a little too thin here. Let me grab some more. So just going to go in here with the, uh, the metallics around the inside of the eye. Uh, we're actually going to come back with a little bit lighter of a color for that there. Uh, off of that snout, uh, we'll also grab, so not uh, getting any onto the sensor there. We're going to do this little bracket piece that's in here on both sides. As well, we'll do this ring that's in here, being careful not to get these uh, teeth or staples or whatever they are here. It's kind of organic-y type pieces. Uh, we'll work our way around this snout. Uh, I'll get inside of here. We'll grab these little buttons here on the side. Some posts, pegs, whatever, snapping it on. Now we got this awesome, gross, syringy type thing up front. We'll make sure we get that and that initial ring around there. Now for the fans themselves, uh, we're going to be just careful that we keep that kind of lighter shade in there, but we'll go in and grab all of the fan blades. In here, uh, both front and back obviously. Now for these spikes on the fans here, um, those will be done in lead belcher. And uh, on the inside, they got these little mounting uh, brackets that are in here. So carefully, I'm going to go in there and grab that. Now, if I do screw up, I can always come back in with a bit more Nurgling Green to tidy it up uh, before we do our wash. But we'll get in there like that. Um, so we have this, it's coming through this, this, this green piece here. And uh, yeah, it looks, looks good. Now, working our way around the hull here. Uh, we're going to get these little uh, vents that are here. We'll do those. Getting in there, but not clogging up the detail there too much. At the back, um, we've got uh, very much similar to what we've seen with the fans and at the top here, uh, we've got this band. So we'll make sure that we get this band uh, paint it up as well. It'll give us a nice kind of two-tone metallic. It's almost like the wheel of a machine. Pretty cool. Now on each of the fans, there is this, um, these kind of control fins here. And I will do those in the lead belcher. Of course, this gives us a little bit of a vectored thrust to kind of move around. It'll also break up the model, just the, the straight up green on the model. That's why I left these bands here uh, to be the green, just to kind of break up the, the, the colors. Now at the back, uh, there are these bands that run across and they are basically holding in all the bloated guts of our blight drone here a blight drone our bloat drone many drones in the nurgle world so i'll make sure that i grab these bands here now at the top 
Uh, initially, I thought I would just do these, these bands would carry down, but they don't. Uh, they're actually just these little bits of metal here that extend over the carapace. And then the structure extends kind of vertically here. Again, like an old kind of ship wheel or something. Very steampunky. Punk esque, I guess. So I want to make sure that I'm not getting too much on the carapace, just this kind of elevated piece up in here. Okay, and then of course we'll have the spikes. Uh, like we did over here. We'll just work our way through all those spikes. Now again, there's going to be, uh, we're going to do the bone here, uh, but uh, you can tell the difference between metal spikes and bone. The bone has this little bits of kind of um, indent and this almost like a porous nature to it, whereas the spikes themselves are they're a solid, you know, solid chunk of metal. Now, as we work our way through, we're going to see all types of, all these different types of cabling. Now, uh, the ribbed elements here, uh, I'm going to paint them in, uh, in the lead belcher here, because there'll be these exposed uh, cables and wires. And there'll be other spots in here as well, where we have, uh, you know, like kind of a shrouding over the cabling, or like a, an insulation over the cabling. And uh, I'm just going to grab those exposed elements in there uh, like that. So that when we come back, it'll cover, uh, we'll, we'll cover the, um, uh, the material there that's, that's on that uh, shrouding or that insulation. And then finally, with the guns here at the, on the side, I'm going to do all of the metallic bits around the guns here. And this one casing, this one shrouding over top, uh, we're going to do that in black. But I want to make sure that I get all through here. Now, I was contemplating having kind of some cool coppery gold pipes, uh, but we're going to use a lot of rust effects here and really kind of show off that reddish, brownish uh, rust effect. So we're actually going to uh, just do all of this here. And I think we'll bring the depth in with the, with the rust effects. So I'll work my way around, grab all those details, and we'll be back to do the bone color. All right, so with the metallics all done, you can see it's really filled in the model quite a bit. Uh, still looks a little paint by numbery, obviously. We've got all that white primer underneath and we haven't really called any attention to any of the detail yet. But the base colors are mostly all there. Um, we're going to continue along. Anything that has kind of a bony uh, element to it, you can see we've got these horns coming out of the top. Uh, we're going to do a screaming skull. And um, we've also got the, uh, there's like a, kind of these big teeth coming out of the uh, turbo fans there and all that. So we're just going to kind of work our way through. So um, starting off, we'll go through clearly and uh, grab any of these bony elements in here. And again, you can tell that the, the bone elements are those because they're identified by these little porous kind of lines or striations that are in there. We'll also go after the little turbo fans here. Just those bones that are kind of sticking out. Actually, I originally wanted to paint them that metallic-y color, uh, but then I noticed, again, those little uh, kind of porous lines that were in there. We've got all of these uh, teeth, which is kind of cool. Makes those turbo fans look like these big mouths. And there's also this little horn coming out of the front of the nose or the snout of the bloat drone here. All right, so I'll work my way, uh, finishing off all the details here. I'll work my way around the model, and I'll just get all these little, uh, these little bony bits. We've got the bone all done, and uh, that bone kind of color, and I'm really liking it. Now, again, it is not a big distinction away from that nurgling green 
but uh, still lots of character in there and it will show up uh, you know through the washing and we're going to black line a little bit in there as well so very very nice uh, happy with that uh, next step as we kind of rock through our basing colors here uh, is going to be all of the cabling and I'm going to do that with our steel legion drab here and it's just a pretty straight up thing any time that we've got uh, kind of insulation or covering for these uh, cables we're going to do it in steel legion drab so uh you know the, the the full cables themselves and then we've got these partially insulated cables in there and if we take a look at the back maybe we've got a decent one. Oh, i see i've even missed spots here where i've got the uh we're supposed to put in the lead belcher there but uh, again we can work our way around and just go in and i'll have to fill those in in a second but anytime there's like a partial covering on these cables, we'll do those all up as well. All right, so going over all the cables, uh, the, the ones that are fully covered, of course, are going to be easy, but anytime there's a partial bit, oh man, I've missed all kinds of these. You don't notice until you start kind of getting rid of all the white, but uh, anytime there's a partial cable, I'll go around uh, leaving the lead belcher intact there. And uh, in general, anything that's covered up, I'll cover that. All right, so we've got all of the cabling done, and it's nice because it's in that same, I mean, it's a, it's a green and a brown for sure, uh, but it'll be in the same tonal range as our base, and with that bone color in there as well, it'll offer a nice kind of similar uh, tonal range to the whole thing. Uh, I also went in and just kind of found a couple of the spots that I'd missed and tidied up and all that. And again, it's a constant iterative process. You're always kind of trying to move closer and closer to that, that perfection there. Uh, the remaining part for us now is going to be our Abaddon Black. Uh, we just got to do the uh, casings for the spitters and we've got to do the, uh, the tentacles as well. So uh, with us here, just gonna get the black all set up. So what we're going to do now is we're going to work on our uh, casings for the weapons here. Now, you'll notice that I painted the detail in first um, and then I'm going to just go around it. And um, as I keep mentioning in all my videos, sometimes it's easier to do the finer details first and then be able to paint on the larger surfaces all around. So with this here, I, I'm just going to do the casings uh, for these spitters here. Okay, so we're on the final stretch here before the wash. Um, it's uh, looking pretty sharp so far. We've got nice depth of color and weight kind of down at the bottom. We'll have that beautiful kind of metallic-y, bronzy look and all of that. The bone colors will highlight, and we're going to do a really streaky paint job on the carapace. So uh, the last thing left to do is our Nagaroth Knight, and we're going to use that for our tentacles uh, that are coming out. Now this is of course in sync with all of our um, our plague marines and the rest of our death guard the pox walkers and all of that uh, and um, we're just going to base in uh, on these tentacles here just like that so we'll make sure we get nice coverage on there um, obviously you want a couple thin coats just to just to kind of get it all looking nice and yeah so just uh, carefully reach in there grab all your uh, the little bits of the tentacle here and uh, there's another one just on the back, up top up here. So um, I'll continue along. I'll get these three tentacles uh, all based up nice and just lots of vibrance and color, which is nice and rich and awesome. Uh, and then we'll, um, I'll do a couple other things here. I'll get the base ready to go because I like to wash the base at the same time. And yeah, it should look uh, look pretty solid. So I'll get the base all prepped up. I'll finish these off and we'll be right back to wash. All right, so we've got uh, all of our metallics and base colors done. I also went in and finished up the base because I like to wash that at the same time. And uh, we're now going to start with the uh, washing process to draw out 
all of that detail. Now, I've got this uh, custom wash here. Uh, it's, uh, and I get loads of questions about it, but it's 25% uh, null oil, 25% Agrax Earthshade, and 50% uh, regular find anywhere floor wax and I mean like literally the cheapest stuff you can find um, all it does is it acts as a flow aid I find that the um, the G dub washes tend to go on a little on the thick side and uh, what this does is this just greatly reduces um, the you know the kind of the restrictions to flow now it goes on pretty thick but you can see right away it starts drawing down now it goes right into all the nooks and crannies here and um, immediately you can see it kind of popping out uh, the detail. Now, what you want to avoid is any of these kind of pooling points like up in here. And you can just take your brush and use it like a sponge and, and soak it up and off you go. So um, it will flow all the way down, which is great. And um, yeah, so I'm just going to do a generous helping of this. Uh, just making sure that I'm careful not to allow any of this stuff to pool up in any of our kind of high detail areas. So you just tap in with your brush and you can pull it out. So just work it through, uh, make sure you get uh, kind of all your detail all cozied up. Okay, so I'll uh, let this dry for about 45 minutes and uh, we'll be good to go. Who said ugly wasn't its own kind of beauty anyway? This is uh, looking really solid kind of grimy and gross and uh yeah i really like it uh the wash does such a good job so um now we're going to start with uh rebasing the colors and we're going to go starting first with nurgling green and we're going to striate now we did this with our plague marines and pox walkers and all that so we'll continue on that same uh style I'll start with kind of the open area now. Uh, the idea here is to get uh, two layers. So we're going to have the Nurgling Green going up until about the midpoint. And then we're going to have Screaming Skull coming down, overlapping the Nurgling Green on the uh, uh, over top of that midpoint. So keeping it simple, uh, let's just start with the streaks. So we're going to do striations. Uh, a striation is uh, a series of parallel lines. And we're not going to be repainting this. We're just going to be going in and doing this kind of uh, streaky type uh, motion here. Now, it doesn't have to be tidy, and we are definitely not repainting this. So you can go over top. Now, uh, you'll see that I will cover up some of our holes, and I will cover up some of the bolts there. Uh, but that's fine. We can always go back in with a little bit of wash after and, and tidy that up. So... Let's do another one here, uh, just to give an idea. Now, um, on these side panels here, uh, the ones of the carapace up top, I'm going to do the same thing. Uh, now, using that as the top and this is the bottom, uh, I'll do that kind of a halfway striation here. Okay. All right, and I'll work my way through. And you can see that we've only gone about halfway up there and we'll continue. Now, uh, I'm going to make sure that I'm not uh, like this one here. I'm going to make sure that the bottom part, uh, you know, as things get dirty and kind of streaky down, uh, it'll always be facing towards the, uh, the bottom of the model. Neat. Okay. Now, the uh, side vents here, or sorry, the, um, the, the little thrusters. Uh, the little turbo fans. Uh, we're going to do the same way, but you'll see here that we've got the top and bottom and it's one piece. So I'll make sure that I kind of reach under uh, that piece there to get that little bit of dirt and all that. And uh, maybe a little bit up top. And for the armor plates, uh, I'll be doing the same thing. Uh, now going towards the bottom, I'm just going to give it a, a, a little bit of a striated hit just like this, uh, just to break it up a little bit. Now the other piece that we need to pay attention to is these fleshy bits on the on the back side. Now, when we did the uh, Death Guard, uh, the um, the Plague Marines, we we're dealing with pretty much just armor everywhere. And when we were dealing with the Pox Walkers, it was the same type of thing where um, it you know we, we used the same colors, but uh, with the organic, it was a little more rounded. Now with the uh, Blow Drone here, we've got exactly those two things. So where the armor is like this hard streak element, uh, I'll, I'll be doing the uh, striations. Whereas this one here, uh, when we come to the fleshy bits, 
what I'm going to do is over brush going over top here. Uh, I'm going to over brush and I'm going to leave all those low lights wherever wherever possible. So uh, the organic is more of a repaint and over brush, uh, whereas the armor is more of the striations. Okay, I'll work my way around here, um, striating the armor, and then I'll be doing kind of this overbrush of the flesh. All right, this guy's getting grosser by the minute and looks awesome. Um, that streakiness just really kind of draws your eye into this filthy, kind of rained on, just grimy, dirty grossness. And uh, yeah, I love, love it. It's looking really, really good now. As I mentioned um, uh, before, uh, we can go over any of the details again, especially the bolts, and I think we will, um, and the uh, the kind of the pustules and stuff here, uh, we, we'll probably go over them again with a little bit of the wash, just to kind of just to kind of draw out those details again. So uh, yeah, super digging it. So now uh, Screaming Skull is going to play a pretty important role in finalizing that uh, that effect. Now um, we talked already about the striations and kind of what we're going to be doing with uh, with those. So let's. Uh, Let's do a quick example of, of those. And with the striations here, uh, again, uh, it's gonna be a little bit of work because of this iconography, but the idea is going to be to start at the top and striate kind of downwards. And we'll do a little bit of overlap down at the bottom, but we want that kind of sun bleached uh, top element. Now we're going to work those lines into the Nurgling green lines here a little bit. Okay, and that's just going to give us that little bit of super worn down. Now, um, obviously, I've gone over a little bit. Uh, we are going to be coming back with a little bit of a touch up uh, there. So it's not a perfect thing, especially when we're trying to do this, um, you know, this kind of very rough streakiness here to uh, do our paint job. Now, the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to go and make sure, now this is kind of the, the domain of the green, the lower part of the armor, uh, but I'm going to use the Screaming Skull as an edge, uh, as just an edge highlight here. And anything that's on the green, we're going to just do a very uh, light, Kind of edge highlight to and on corners like this where we can we'll just tap in a little bit of this very small type of uh, striation and it's going to be a little more important as we kind of get into things like this so um, we've got these cracks we've got blisters and all of that and i'm just going to just call out a little bit of the edge of these blisters. So essentially it's it's highlighting the the green uh, just a little bit, but we still want to take too much away from that green itself. So just a little bit of highlight there. Now if we come in with multiple thin coats on this, it seems to have dried a little bit in the lights, which is good. Uh, if we come in with the multiple thin coats, uh, we can definitely make it look very streaky and messy. Uh, as we come in okay and that gives us a little bit of a sun bleached look to the top and I think we're gonna need to go a little heavier uh, kind of right near the top on those on those striations all right nice so I will keep going with that the next step I want to do is uh, continuing that same type of kind of streaky dirtiness to it uh, we're going to go after all the um, the bone elements here as well so you can see it's got this nice kind of porous look to it so what we're going to do is just streak over the whole body of that bone and this kind of sinew that's kind of connecting it all together. We're going to go over the whole body of that uh, with Screaming Skull. So that will make that, and you can start to see it now popping out against that kind of green backed, uh, even the streakiness that we have in here. Okay, so we'll go after all the bone pieces. Uh, if there's something kind of higher to the top, for example, we'll get lighter as we go to the top, or a little heavier, I guess, with the with the repainting, the repolishing of that, which is good. And 
on the fleshy bits at the back, and again, we're kind of doing two styles of painting here. Uh, we'll, we'll obviously do the striations, striations at the top. Now with this kind of fleshy bits, what we want to do is just go, just kind of the, it's again, just that nice kind of highlight here where we're going out, uh, you know, kind of the major highlights, but we're just getting the edge of the major highlights just like that. And it gives us this nice kind of tonal uh, variation. Now, uh, because we have these edges, anything that's kind of swollen due to, uh, you know, plague and pestilence and pustulence and all the other stuff that goes along with it, um, because it gets raised up, it makes it an easy highlight to, uh, to pull off. And it just gives that nice little bit of colorful uh, variety to the flesh, which is, which is awesome. Uh, the other thing I want to call out here is these uh, pustules. Now, um, these are ultimately going to be tipped with white, so they look like they're full of grossness, which is great. Uh, but I want to make sure that we just give them an extra highlight so we have uh, gradation up to up to the white. And we can come back in later, of course, with, uh, with some wash and just kind of sneak it in just to, just to low light it just a little bit. And we will be coming out with the pens as well. So I'll, uh, I'll continue along here, uh, making sure that we have these nice uh, little bits of highlight. I will continue uh, striding uh, over the armor and the, uh, the bone finish here, kind of culminating to a little bit heavier up at the top. And uh, yeah, we'll take a look at how that goes. So uh, just uh, just relax, uh, you know, add until you're happy, and then and then go from there. And don't forget your uh, your edge highlight around kind of the green hard pieces of armor. So uh, down here we'll be running an edge highlight, uh, even though it's the kind of the domain of the green. We'll run it there as well. All right, uh, and of course the turbo fans, the teeth, uh, all that. All right, I'll be back. All right, so I'm pretty stoked with the way that streaky paint scheme kind of comes out. Now, uh, the only complaint I would have is I think we need a little bit more definition in here. Uh, we will be coming in with a micron pen after, and we will be applying a little bit more wash as well. So we'll definitely hammer out that contrast because we're losing the bolts and things like that. But as far as the overall scheme is concerned, I'm, I'm really digging this. Like it's uh, it's really nice. It's bright and vibrant. And again, the, uh, the biggest sin of a Nurgle army, I think, is just to be just too drab. Like it gets lost on the table, whereas you want something with a little bit of, you know, kind of presence and excitement and contrast and all that. So uh, really, really, really liking it. Now, the next step we're going to be working on is tidying up those kind of burnished uh, golds. Uh, we'll start with a base of our uh, Balthazar gold here. And uh, we're just going to go back in and um, just kind of go over the major highlights of that gold. Now, uh, after we washed it, we can see that there is uh, definitely some, some kind of cool presence in here. We can see that it's all kind of battered and beaten up. So uh, I'm going to leave as much of that uh, low lighting and shade as I can. I'll leave the, uh, the bolts and all that as well. But I just want to go in and just kind of touch up and kind of repop that color a little bit as it tends to get a little drowned out with the wash. Now, the nice thing about Balthazar Gold is that it is it is bright, but it's still you know a fairly deep color in general. So we'll go over and we'll tidy up our fly icon here, and it's just a nice, simple, easy. And we'll come back again and kind of outline that 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 paint, but just want to brighten that up a little bit. And we also want to do it with our uh, at the back here with our kettles, these big kind of kettle drums cooking up all the uh, toxins and poisons uh, for the drone itself. So again, just going over top, leaving all that beautiful kind of low lighting uh, around the bolts and we'll just keep that there. And then finally, uh, the plague spitters down at the bottom, are gonna get a little bit more of that uh, kind of highlight love as well. But again, they're all like these beaten copper kettles. So uh, just restoring a chunk of that uh, color back that brightness but leaving those bolts kind of isolated out oh and of course we can't forget our little uh, icon down here we'll just do a quick overbrush of that
So now that we've brought up the depth of the kind of beaten copper kind of look, uh, we're going to give it an edge highlight of fulgurite copper. And um, definitely for highlighting golds, you, you can't beat the fulgurite copper. Um, I know a lot of people highlight the golds with like a lighter gold, or they'll highlight it with like a rune fang steel, like a very bright kind of heavy metallic silver. Uh, but fulgurite copper has just got that magical uh, combination of silver and gold. All right, so we'll take our fulgurite copper and we'll just do just a quick and edge highlight over the edges of our kind of beaten copper there. And we'll do it over just the edges of our Nurgle symbol here. Now for our icons, we'll do the same. Just go around the edges here. Just a very simple uh, edge highlight. Just to add a little bit of that luminosity to it. And then of course we'll do it uh, on our uh, coppery, kettley type holders for the plague spitters. It's just nice and bright. And then finally for this big kind of kettle drum up here, uh, we'll just grab the edges and just increase the brightness around that edge a little bit there. And we're going to do Eschen Gray over the black uh, and then we'll do over those cabling uh, bits there. Uh, the, the insulation, we'll do our Steel Legion Drab and our Carrick Stone. And so um, let's get started. So with our Eschen Gray here, I'm just going to apply just a little bit of an edge highlight over the blacks. And it's uh, you know, super easy. We don't have a whole lot going on here. So just over the black, uh, I'm just going to apply just a nice, uh, easy edge highlight. Now with the blacks done, I'm going to move on to Steel Legion Drab. And that is just going to just do a, uh, just a quick overbrush over the... Um, over the cable insulation and that'll be again a fairly simple process uh, we're gonna leave as much of the low light as we can so just doing a just a quick overbrush and it's very easy to do obviously uh, just a quick overbrush over just restoring a little bit of that color and if we keep that low lighting intact it keeps a lot of that depth in there for us it's also a great way to kind of tidy up if you've gone over a little bit with your uh, with your lead belcher when you're doing the silvery parts. And now we'll take our Carrick Stone and we'll just do a just a gentle highlight uh, over top of any of our cabling things. Now you can use it as an edge highlight, or I can just pick up the very kind of extreme edges, so where they they fold a little bit here, uh, coming out a little bit of an edge maybe while it's coming down here and just a very again very light kind of highlight but we just want to add a little bit of personality uh, of course you can run it uh, down the side of the cable here just to give it a little bit of extra depth uh, over top of that lead um, over top of the steel legion drab Okay, so we've got one component left now, and that is essentially our tentacles. And we're going to be doing uh, that with two colors, Zarius Purple and Gene Stealer Purple. And uh, Zarius Purple, we're just going to use as the overbrush color. And then uh, Gene Stealer Purple, we're going to use on uh, just kind of the very ends, uh, kind of a striated look to them. Uh, so let's go up to the top and we'll see how we're going to, going to do this. Um, so that bottom kind of two thirds there, uh, I'm just going to kind of stripe that in. See, it's a little bit of a blend that we're uh, trying to accomplish here. And we're just going to go do that at the top and we'll stretch that down to the bottom. Just so we have a nice kind of gradation of shade uh, going from uh, these three colors here. It works out pretty darn well. We'll then use our Gene Stealer Purple and we're going to use that just for that uh, last third. So we're, it's, it's kind of in thirds here, I suppose, but that last third is going to be Gene Stealer Purple. We can see that we've got that nice, uh, that nice little bit of uh, shift on the color. And we'll just use uh, Gene Stealer Purple on the last third, uh, just to give it that little bit of extra oomph 
and kind of color to it. And I may, if I want to highlight something a little bit, I may just pick out a spot at the top here. I uh, just to give it that little bit of an extreme highlight, but you can see those three colors blend super well. Okay, so I'm really enjoying the way the model has come together. Uh, I like the colors, the blending on the tentacles, uh, you know, the cabling and all that is blended together really, really nicely as well. I love these kind of kettly pots at the back. And uh, what we're going to do is kind of a final effort to really draw out all the detail is we're going to use our uh, Micron pen here. Uh, usually they're available from any kind of art store and all that. I'm using the 0.2 uh, two millimeter one or the 005. And uh, you know, these are great as kind of a detail enhancing thing. I know the old style of, of GW painting was to always um, you know, come back, uh, you know, sorry, you start with a, start with a black and then come back uh, you know, with color and always kind of leave that little black outline. Whereas this, I just get to paint and then I can restore that outline. So where I'm going to use this is essentially wherever two colors meet or two panels, two frames, what have you, uh, wherever those two colors meet, uh, I use my Micron pen and you can see right away that it adds just a load of, of definition. Uh, you get some situations like this where it really is uh, you know, tough to see kind of the line where one color uh, begins and the other ends. And so it's nice just to get in here and kind of black line that, that in. Uh, I'll also go after all the rivets, uh, again, just to give it that little bit of pop. I mean, I love the look and feel of uh, having this in. It's almost like a cell shaded kind of look to it. So uh, wherever two colors meet, um, wherever two plates meet or like a rivet or something like that, uh, we'll go in and we'll black line. Now, this is going to be great if we want to see kind of a difference in texture here. I can, uh, I can do it on these uh, vectored thrusters here. And you can see that right away it draws your eye in. And it's a nice solid contrast. And really there's, it's next to no work. It's, it's really, really nice and solid and, and, and definitely kind of stands out. Okay, so the black lining has come in and it's given us lots of, you know, definition over different bolts and called out things like little teeth and, you know, the iconography and all of that. Uh, really happy with that. Um, on the back side as well, you'll see that I've also drawn out a lot of the uh, these pustule kind of blisters that are there. Now, uh, two things are going to happen. The first thing is I'm going to take a white scar and just as it's kind of an absolute finishing touch for the model, I'm going to go through and I'm going to uh, go after all those blisters with uh, white scar and um, it's nice it's simple and uh, you know it's it's a very easy type thing but it adds like just a massive amount of pop uh, to the model so I'll go after uh, the pustules uh, big and small here okay and then uh, in addition to that uh, I'm going to take this wash and um, revisit essentially our different pieces. So I'll use a detail brush for this. Shake it up really well here. And uh, I'm just going to go in and just kind of bring back uh, some major uh, low lights of some parts. So up here we've got these kind of major elements and I'm just going to bring in the wash just to restore that uh, back. Now if you come across bolts that you've missed again you can just kind of sneak some wash in and around those bolts to pop them back out which looks really good and uh, if there's anything else that you want to kind of add to for example these cracks in the uh, in the skin I want to add a bit more depth uh, to those we can definitely go in there and add a bit of wash if you want to you know just eyeball it and you want to add a little bit more kind of low light uh, in these little crevices here, then you can go in and do that. And it's a great way to just go in and just, you know, kind of hand pick and hand detail the, the model as you see it. So uh, I will do that now is just go in here and just add a little bit of wash to those low light areas just to bring back that depth in case I went over a little bit heavy on the highlighting. Oh, Okay, he is all done. Um, uh, just one last addition. Uh, I went in and I was going to do something kind of metallic and gemmy with the eye, but nothing beats that cloudy kind of white eye. So I just painted that in white and then did a, just a wash around the outside. But you can see here now that with the base finished up and all of that, like he looks awesome. I have, uh, 
I have uh, flown him around the desk uh, for the last little bit. Uh, something I have a bit of a habit doing, but uh, really liking the look of it. I think it's, um, again, looks like it's been weathered. It's been out in the rain and just not really well taken care of. Just, you know, that's maybe why it looks a little sad, I guess. Now, we are going to come back and do a couple things. We're going to do some rust effects. Uh, we're going to use that Nurgle's Rot to have this soupy, snotty mess kind of coming out from all these cables and leaving a trail in behind him, which will be pretty sweet. And uh, yeah, it looks, looks great. So um, that is my take on the Bloat Drone. I hope you liked the video. Uh, if you did, feel free to hit that like button. I hope it was of value to you guys. And uh, obviously, if you haven't subscribed already, please consider subscribing. Uh, you'll get uh, a ton of videos just like this. We'll do uh, we do a little bit of gaming. We do uh, you know kind of a whole lot of painting tutorials, reviews, things like that. So uh, welcome to the uh, welcome to the community. And uh, so um, I'll leave this as is, and then we'll come back and do yeah, like I said, our rusting and our uh, our Nurgle's rot and all that stuff it's uh, gonna be awesome so thanks a lot for watching guys we'll catch you in the next video